it is now time for some Python on hardware. There was a lot going on, so buckle, buckle up. up. <laughs> get comfy. Um, get, forward like your mail. Do snakes have to wear belt buckles? Or well, no? um, so uh, Brian, Melissa, JP, and Scott were at the Hackaday Super Conference. At Supercon, there was a lot of fun people that we know. This is Brian, this is Jorman, um, and Jorman's bot. Lots of Adafruit hardware in there. This is Mog. One was there, and then there's some animatronic ears. And every person at Supercon got an edge badge. So this has machine learning on it. You can speak into it, and it can recognize words. You can also do all sorts of other things with machine learning. Also runs Circuit Python. Also runs Arduino. And the badge hacking begun. So there are lots of different things. This, I think, was a, um, like a, a CO2 is, detector. This is an air quality sensor. It was sensor. air quality, And because yeah. we have like a Grove connector, you can plug Grove sensors right in, and so it was really yeah. easy. Yeah, Grove, Stemma, Quick, Stemma QT. Uh, here it is displayed there. Here's, here. hello, my name is. Uh, I love that. 855 parts per million of CO2. Updated the name badge code. Aaron made this great badge hack that controlled the um, trash bots, picking bot. The bots that she's working on. Yeah. Folks made shark controlling badge hacks. And uh, one of the things, you know, we we sent these out and we're like, well, let's keep an eye on Twitter and figure out, can people easily do something with it? And a lot of times um, people say the thing that you know, you, you hope this is the experience they have, but then they kind of crystallize it in just like, you know, 120 characters. So this is kind of nice. In my humble opinion, the unsung hero of Supercon was the Adafruit Edge Badge Circuit Python made extremely accessible to customize with only a micro USB cable. Have a look at TensorFlow part yet, but we'll give it a go soon. Did I mention how cheap it is? So that's what we like to hear. How easy it is, how low cost it is, and how you can get started so fast. Geek Mom was there with lots of cool projects. Thank you. You made it super easy with CircuitPython Library. Look forward to using the machine learning too. Your demos of voice recognition look amazing. So many possibilities. It's hard to know where to start, but of course I always start with LEDs. Found an edge badge in swag bag. Started researching Git repos and documentation to program and realized it was CircuitPython. No documentation needed. Imagine that. Imagine hearing no documentation needed. Just edit code.py on mass storage. Zero barrier to entry. Supercon. But not everyone liked Edge Badge, Lady Ada. What? Some random dude on Twitter said it's not simple and it violates Rule 9. He came up with rules. And so I, had, I tweeted back and I'm just like, but it's so simple and it's all this stuff. But um, this guy didn't like it. So while he was um, trolling me on Twitter, I just put his words on this badge. So I wear this friend all the time. I yeah, I was wondering why you were wearing that this morning. That's what it is. And like nothing else. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott did a talk there at Supercon, and then in our newsletter and on the blog, um, I think we got to the blog post uh, this week, is exploring hardware old and new with CircuitPython. Scott did a full talk. Brian, Stacia says you may know. Brian in Discord uh, took a photo. This is a lot of the hardware that was there. And uh, this had a special place in my heart because I started Hackaday 15 oh, look, years ago. Oh, it's like a layer skull. <laughs> yeah, I started the site 15 years ago. I don't have anything to do with it now besides, like, I read it. Um, and uh, I designed a logo, and I always thought a lot of these things were going to be possible with it. But it's nice to see all the different logo variations, but also all the people coming together um, at a cool event. And it was great to have um, our stuff there as Adafruit. So it's like it was, it was really neat to see this thing continue on. You know, you start something 15 years ago, and you don't know what's going to happen, and this is what happened. Um, the badge, the uh, the Hackaday badge, it uses. Tiny USB, mm -hmm. and so that's a, one of our projects that uh, we've we've released and worked on. And Tiny USB was in the news because the uh, FOMU FPGA uses that. Correct. As well. Um, Which is great. More more platforms. Other Circuit Python news. There's another board. It's now up to 88 boards altogether at uh -huh. CircuitPython.org/downloads. This is the uh, Xbox boards. There's a couple of them. This is Maxim's Feather. Um, the Feather ecosystem continues to expand and grow rapidly. We'll talk about the Feather contest in a bit, because that's related to Hackaday. Uh, more community projects were posted around, so we tried to get them in the newsletter as fast as we could. Uh, this pulls the Reddit site, and uh, there's a subreddit called Shower Thoughts. And uh, they're kind of insightful, and it's on a screen. Uh, this was made by a community member. And oh. it is a circuit 
python plant water using cricket. So um, it just automatically waters the plants using circuit python. This is some Overwatch costuming. Um, we're seeing more and more costuming made uh, with Adafruit stuff, NeoPixels, circuit python. Um, more heart beating projects. So we had one on our site, and then this one is um, they're testing to, to see how it works with uh, this latex uh, That's painted cool fabric. And creepy. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a goggle project, and it uses 3D printing and NeoPixels. And um, if you think this is, you know, this is it, nope, they're just getting started. So not only does it have a physical effect on the, the eyes, but um, as you can see, they light up as well. This is so cool. Isn't that neat? People love iris yeah, closures. Yeah, so look at that. That's nice. And then this is some uh, web BLE that coding couple on Twitter was experimenting with. So you can use Moo, you can use Circuit Playground Express, and you can do things like do a color picker right there via the web browser. And Bluetooth. And Bluetooth. Yeah. And then I also wanted to show um, a video from uh, Nicholas. He's working on us with a radio project. So it's a one minute demo, and I thought I would just, uh, just play it. So uh, I'll see you on the other side here in about a minute. So this is a very quick demo of the work I've done today on the Adafruit radio module. Um, I've got two laptops, uh, my ThinkPad that's connected to this Bluefruit device, and over here is another Bluefruit device connected to my MacBook, uh, which is running Mew, and uh, I've connected, uh, made a serial connection to the device, and it's reporting the things that it's receiving on its radio. Uh, and over here in the REPL, just three lines is all I need to actually send a message. I import the radio class, I instantiate the class, and then I simply send the message. And over here, we now see that uh, it's been reported four times. That's a bug. I know how to fix that, uh, I hope, um, in the not-too-distant future. But it works, and that's the first step. It works, and then I need to make it work properly, and then I need to make it work properly with documentation and tests. Um, so it's going quite well. Thanks for watching. Caitlin's dad made this Ada tote. Um, pretty much anything that we put on Twitter, Caitlin's dad can immediately make a project about this. So maybe we'll make a NeoPixel tote one day. Over on Hackster, um, they posted about the STM 32F405, and it is the fastest or one of the fastest circuit python running boards we have and over on digikey sean heimel did a video about this board and more so head over to digikey's channel youtube.com slash digikey to check this out there is a python in education discord we joined up over there um, this is kind of neat because it is yet another place online where you can go and talk about python this is specifically geared towards educators uh, this is the open mv project um, uses MicroPython and also has the camera uh, working with it so you can do people detection so a very cool machine learning thing for edge devices the latest issue of MicroMag is out it's a free download but you can also buy it subscribe and you can support it and then Lady Ada I wanted to ask you about this because this made the rounds yeah Fatal Fury this is this a move that you do with uh, Mortal Kombat is like yeah you pull out somebody's like heart and show to them like, or, this, okay. is, this, is, is this? this is the ESP32 thing or what yeah yeah, so what they, is I guess the um, the ESP32, you can have, from, you know, the firmware sits on, on a flash chip, and you can encrypt it. And normally, you know, it's a symmetric encryption, so the key has to be kept uh, very secret. Um, but it's possible to glitch the key out um, using a, a glitching attack okay. um, to try to get it to to extract what the key so is. So you can get the you can get the firmware. You can oh. get so you can decode the firmware. Okay. Uh, it's being ch updated in a hardware revision that's coming out. So soon. this is permanent if it's in the if it's out. If, yeah. If you have an ESP32. Which is actually why we you know well one thing is some people just don't want their firmware to be read. Yeah. But it's also why you know people recommend keeping um, like secrets yeah. like in private keys on external chip. Got it. So, like the crypto chips that we stock, they're designed yeah. to be um, secure against the glitch attack. So they, I mean, there might be future attacks they're not secure against, but yeah, it's a lot of microcontrollers are not secure against glitching attacks or, or delamination or whatever. So, it, you know, but if you can afford it, having a separate chip to store those secrets means you don't have to worry about yeah. it as much. But um, okay. but still, yes, the firmware can be decrypted right. with you know not too much difficulty if you have a, a glitching toolkit. 
yeah. which I think won like the Hackaday Prize like last year, so it's pretty easy to get yeah, one. Yeah, I suspect there might be like some IoT project that um, uses like an ESP32. You can glitch out the key, and it might be a private key for like how you're controlling your lights or something. Yeah, like that. something like that. Okay. Um, this is kind of neat. There were 545 entries from 23 countries for the European AstroPi Challenge Mission Space Lab. The 423 selected teams now get to write code for the science experiments that are going to run on the AstroPies. And um, this is in the International Space Station. It's neat. A lot of it's going to be Python, if not all of it. I love it. That's so cool. And that, Lady Ada, is the news. And this is Cyber Turkey. Cyber Turkey. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, move on to time travel. Okay.